Hello. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the structure of unconditioned or unlearned behavior. And you might wonder, well, why are we going to talk about that in a class having to do with learning? Well, it turns out uh, how learning operates uh, depends on the structure of instinctive or unlearned responses. And uh, uh, there's a lot of behavior that the organisms engage in, including human beings, uh, that you don't have to learn. And uh, how uh, that unconditioned behavior is organized has a lot to do with what is the impact of a conditioning procedure. And you might appreciate this better um, by analogy with uh, carving something out of wood. So I happen to have uh, here a uh, carving of a, uh, of a bird. <laughs> and if you were a, a wood carver and uh, you were going to carve, uh, you got a block of wood and you would carve a bird, you have to pay attention to the grain of the wood. And in particular, you want the grain of the wood to be uh, in line with the general shape of the bird. And you have to pay attention to the knots in the wood. You don't want to have a knot in a block of wood where the tip of the bird's beak is going to be because then the, the statue won't look quite right. So uh, you could think about the, the pre-existing organization of the wood in terms of its grain and the knots and branches and so forth as, uh, as a constraint on how you go about taking that block of wood and shaping it into uh, something like a, a statue of a bird. Well, that behavior works pretty much like that. So that's why we're going to talk about unconditioned uh, behavior. So uh, the, uh, today we're going to focus on the one way of thinking about unconditioned behavior, and that is the concept of the reflex, uh, which uh, originated with the thinking of uh, Rene Descartes. If we could uh, see the first slide, this is a drawing from uh, a, a, an early man med medieval manuscript, and I'm not sure where to where the, uh, I got this drawing, um, but it illustrates uh, the concept of a reflex as uh, Rene Descartes uh, originally thought about this. He, he was a wide-ranging philosopher. I mean, he uh, thought about all kinds of things, and he thought a lot about behavior and human behavior and animal behavior, and uh, he thought that a lot of uh, behavior seemed to be reactions to stimuli, and automatic reactions to stimuli, and this gave him the concept of a reflex. This is a leg withdrawal reflex. If you uh, accidentally touch uh, your, uh, you know, step on a hot coal and fire in front of you, your foot's going to come, <laughs> your foot's going to come right back, <laughs> and you're going to withdraw your foot really fast. In fact, you're going to withdraw your foot before you realize that you've actually done it. And some of you may have touched a hot stove or uh, accidentally picked up. Uh, uh, a, a, a coal uh, on a camping fire, I mean, you, you, you can appreciate that. So that, that's the concept of a reflex. And uh, uh, the, the word is based on a, a notion of reflect, the behavior sort of reflects some aspect of the stimulus. Uh, the, the next slide is a more modern uh, diagram of the neural circuit uh, of a reflex arc. And uh, Reflexes uh, uh, are triggered by uh, a stimulus that activates sense organs. Uh, that information travels in sensory neurons to the central nervous system, which is the spinal cord, and then up to the brain, uh, though not, not always. And, uh, but certainly the spinal cord, uh, where it makes connections with an interneuron, which connects to a motor neuron, which moves out and uh, that actually activates the muscles. So that's the concept of a reflex. Uh, and uh, uh, we've seen enough of the reflex arc, thanks. Uh, so now, you have to, now you've got me to look at. And uh, so uh, why, what's, what's interesting about reflexes? Well, for most people, it's not very interesting. And so you don't have many uh, people in a psychology department who are experts on reflexes. But reflexes are, in fact, really fascinating. 
and they are really important. Like uh, some of you may have noticed that I'm standing up. Well, what enables me to stand up? Well, uh, there are uh, reflexive adjustments that my feet make, which uh, prevent me from falling over one way or the other. And uh, uh, those occur automatically, and there's, we're so accustomed to them that you don't even feel them. You don't even know that they're going on. Uh, but you know that they're pretty complicated because uh, if you try to build a robot as a standing human being who would work, walk on two feet, that turns out to be really hard to do. Why? Because the robot keeps falling over. <laughs> and uh, you can appreciate how complicated it is to stand upright if you try to stand on one foot. <laughs> so there's a homework assignment. So when you go home, stand on one foot. And as I'm doing right now in the camera, I can't show you this, <laughs> but uh, uh, and I'm wobbling quite a bit more than I was wobbling before. And the other thing that's pretty dramatic if you stand on one foot is that you can feel your feet make all kinds of adjustments that kind of correct uh, the wobbling and sort of uh, help to keep you upright. <laughs> and it's pretty complicated. And you know how complicated it is because uh, kids, when they're first trying to stand upright, don't manage to do that very well. They keep falling down. And the other people who keep falling down are people who've had strokes. Uh, uh, the elderly uh, tend to, you know, they have balance issues and they have trouble. And if you have a, a stroke or some kind of neurological problem, uh, you have to relearn how to maintain balance. And that relearning can be pretty slow. And so these reflexes uh, are, we take them for granted uh, ordinarily, but they in fact are pretty important. So uh, what are other reflexes that are pretty important? Well, and these don't involve learning. So these are things that you have to do without having learned to do them. Uh, well, it's the first thing you have to do uh, when you're born. You know, being born is pretty, <laughs> we don't remember, I don't remember it being born, but it's a, it, it's a huge change in uh, uh, how we cope with the world. Uh, the, uh, the baby uh, just before it's born is getting all its nutrients, oxygen, and everything else through the umbilical cord, passes through the uh, uh, birth canal, they cut the umbilical cord, and all of a sudden, it has to get all of its uh, oxygen through the mouth. So how does it manage to do that? Well, it triggers uh, breathing reflexes. And, uh, and what you see uh, when you watch uh, a baby breathe is something like this. So uh, uh, I'm going to try to demonstrate. I don't look like a baby, but uh, imagine if, if I were a baby. Uh, and you were watching me breathe, what would you see? What you would see is this. <laughs> that is ordinarily, babies breathe in and out and when they do, parents are happy and baby, baby's not crying. Parents get a bit of a break and everybody, everybody is cool. But one of the interesting things about babies is they don't do that all the time. They quit breathing. And as they quit breathing, that triggers the respiratory occlusion reflex. When you quit breathing, there's a buildup of carbon dioxide, which causes the head to go back and with lots of air being sucked in through the oral cavity. And if, uh, if your head falling, thrown back, doesn't get a lot of air into the, uh, into the lungs, then the hands come up and, and the hands start pushing moving like this, which will usually be successful in pushing out of the way something that might have been obstructing the baby's air passages. 
so uh, the respiratory occlusion reflex is a really important reflex in newborns. And uh, for newborns that don't have a vigorous respiratory occlusion reflex, uh, uh, they end up dying. And uh, uh, that's a really tragic uh, experience for the parents. And uh, is is uh, is recorded as an instance of sudden infant death uh, syndrome, which is really a horrendous uh, horrendous uh, experience for everybody. So um, reflexes help you keep breathing, and they keep helping you do that the rest of your life. And thank God, well, I'm breathing okay. So what else you have to do as an infant? Well, the other thing you have to do is is to uh, well, get nutrition. How do you get nutri nutrition? Well, you get nutrition through suckling. And there are a series of uh, interesting reflexes involved in getting nutrition. One is, one is an orienting response. So, so if you tickle it, an infant's uh, cheek on the side, the infant will turn so that your finger will fall in the infant's mouth. Uh, so if an infant is tickled by a nipple uh, or, or a a uh, sucking bottle, and the nipple falls into the infant's mouth. And once it's in the infant's mouth, th then you get this really vigorous sucking behavior. And uh, wh why do you suppose infants don't have teeth? Because <laughs> if they did, they would they would chomp. Uh, they, they would injure <laughs> injure the nipple that uh, that is feeding them. Uh, so uh, they they suck really hard, and if uh, if, you, if you have uh, uh, someone in your family has an infant suckling, you try it. Stick your fing finger, have them suck on your finger. It's amazing what the power of that suckling is. And that's obviously a reflex, and it's really important for survival. And we all, we think about it in terms of a reflex that helps uh, the baby. Uh, <clears throat> In fact, uh, the sucking reflex also uh, activates uh, reflex, reflex mechanisms on the part of the mom who is breastfeeding because the suckling stimulation is necessary for uh, milk production, which is a reflexive process. And it's necessary for milk letdown. So for a mom to uh, nurse baby successfully, she not only has to have a vigorously sucking infant, but uh, she has to have milk. And uh, the milk is produced and stored in uh, vesicles in the back of the breast. And it has to be let down to the tip of the nipple for the infant to get to it. And that is uh, created by the milk letdown reflex. And uh, milk uh, comes down only if it has been produced. And milk production itself is a reflexive process that requires suckling stimulation as an input. So the uh, infant feeding system is a, uh, a coordinated system of behavioral and physiological processes that involve complex interactions between two individuals, the baby and the, and, uh, and the, and the mom who's, uh, who's breastfeeding. Uh, and all of that inter complex interaction is coordinated by... Uh, reflex processes. So the next time somebody tells you that reflexes are not interesting, you should look them in the eye and tell them that were it not for reflexes, you wouldn't be alive. <laughs> That's my story for today. Thanks, folks. See you next time. <laughs>